Hello, it is Thursday, August 19th, 2021. I'm Chris Remo, and welcome back to my New York Times crossword daily solve. It is a Thursday puzzle. It is what I always think of as the first really potentially tricky puzzle of the week, although maybe not this week, given Tuesday's trickiness for me. And before I get into the puzzle, I wanted to address uh, a bit of extra context for some of yesterday's clues. Um, If you recall, if you watched yesterday's solve, uh, there was a reference to Thomas Nast, the, uh, I suppose, early 20th century American cartoonist, and Robert Logan comments, brilliant theme, Nast had all manner of animals in his cartoons and did popularize them as avatars for our political parties. So that was something um, we didn't really touch on yesterday, was that the clues donkey and elephant were party animals, meaning political party animals, representing the Democratic and Republican parties in the United States. And that's uh, that's very interesting that Nast was the one who popularized those, I don't know, mascot, unofficial mascots, I suppose, maybe, maybe official at this point. And additionally, a few people actually pointed out that I missed a bit of, well, it's not so much that I missed, I guess I just wasn't aware of the full sort of extent of what a white elephant exchange is. Deuter McBrohan points out, white elephant is specifically when everyone brings a gift and everyone draws numbers, then goes in order where they decide to either open a gift or steal someone else's, with there being limits on how many times something can be stolen. A number of people commented on this, and apparently a white elephant is a whole complicated affair. So (laughs) I did not know that. I don't know that I, 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 maybe I've done that in the past. Maybe I haven't. I'm not sure. But a white elephant, yes, I think was referred to as a Yankee swap in the uh, in the clue, which was certainly something I was not familiar with. Anyway, uh, that was yesterday's puzzle. What about today's puzzle? It's a Thursday puzzle, as I said, so maybe a little trickier, and it's by Oliver Roder, edited, as always, by Will Shorts. So, shall we get going? I think so. Ready to get started? Okay. A vaping device, informally. Uh, I think this is an e-cig, an e-cigarette. That's what I suspect this to be. Blank Roy, Patriarch on HBO's Succession. Oh boy, this, I really, really, really enjoy this, this show. Um, I think there's a third series coming out soon, maybe? Anyway, it's Logan Roy. Um, I think that character is meant to be, uh, based on figures like Rupert Murdoch and, um, Oh, who's the CBS one? Anyway, the CBS guy. (laughs) Successfully solicit with up. Successfully, uh, I'm not sure offhand. I wanted to say hit up, but that's not, that's not correct. Let's see. Let's look here. Blank of raw, symbolic depiction in Egyptian art. Is it the eye of raw? I think that is the case. There's that stylized eye that you see often in uh, in Egyptian art, in ancient Egyptian artwork. Dog eat dog. Uh, well, this means sort of brutal or or uh, unforgiving. Let's check this cross here. Arizona City near the California border. Is this Yuma again? As in three ten to Yuma? This came up in a crossword recently. Let's see. Stand in for the unnamed. Not sure offhand. Let's keep let's keep checking crosses here. <clears throat> a flat screen option for short. Uh, this could be LCD, liquid crystal display, a uh, screen display technology. Rival of Hoover. So Hoover is a vacuum cleaner brand, and a rival could be I think Orec. It's another vacuum cleaner brand. Facial feature named for an animal. Interesting. What facial feature starts with a G? Is it grin? That doesn't make any sense. Where Dalmatia is. Oh, interesting. Where Dalma- Where is Dalmatia? Crete, what fits with what fits here? Operatic daughter of the king Amona oh, excuse me. Amonazro. Is it Aida? 
let's let's uh, keep looking around. Monopoly cards. Ah, yes, deeds. So the um, property deeds that you that you can purchase in Monopoly. World capital on the island of New Providence. Interesting. <clears throat> Not my strongest start so far. Let's keep looking. NVR's blank Totenberg. This rings a bell. I, I want to say Nina Totenberg. Let's look here. Blues organization. Is it some sort of police organization, maybe? Oh, here, Buffalo Bill's surname. Buffalo Bill Cody, I think that would be. It's possible. Could be maybe so. 1970 John Wayne film. Uh, I think this would start with Rio something. As in Spanish for river, but I don't know what the I don't know what the rest of it is. Sworn. So it could be sworn, meaning, I mean, it could be sworn as in sort of uttered an oath, but it could be sworn as in bound, bound to do something. I'm I'm sworn to do this. Um, it could be could be either of those senses senses or possibly an additional one. Um, Let's see. End. I'm not sure if I'm skipping a lot today, aren't I? It has a cedar tree on its flag. So this could be a country, it could be a U.S. state, could be something else, but it's probably one of those two things. World's highest paid actor in 2021, familiarly. Hmm. Boy, highest paid actor in 2021. That would have to be a legacy title, wouldn't it? I mean... <laughs> Well, I mean, I suppose not. I just mean, it's not as though there are, are a lot of big things being filmed right this moment, are there? Maybe, who knows? 2007 Nobel Peace Prize winner. Not sure offhand. I'm going to just go through and look for low-hanging fruit. That's often what I do on Thursdays and onward, is sort of skim through the skim through the grid and find things that we can be pretty confident about that will give us some crosses. Mobile homes of a sort. Um, with the of a sort, this could be getting at something sort of clever, like a, I mean, it won't be this, it doesn't fit, but as an example, a snail shells or something like that, something that is a is sort of a cutesy way of meeting the, uh, the, the clue. Castle defenses. This is interesting that it's such a short word and is plural. Could there be a rebus? I don't know what this would be in only three letters. Let's look here. Okay, I'm pretty sure there is a rebus. <laughs> because dog eat dog with this C-U looks like cutthroat to me. And let's see, can you imagine what this would be? Castle defenses. Let's say it is plural. So we need a word that will fit in these two cells, and it is castle defenses. And the singular would fit in these two cells. Um, I think dog eat dog would be cut throat, which would make castle defenses moats. So um, that's a that's a uh, so there's some kind of theme going on here involving the word oat. So we should be on that. That's a reason, I suppose, in these uh, Thursday. I think Thursday in particular, which often has sort of clever themes like this and sort of unusual gimmicks. That's a reason to um, uh, I suppose take that breezier attitude early on where you go around the grid and try and find things you're pretty confident about. Because uh, sometimes you'll find cases like this where it just doesn't seem like you could fit the correct word for castle defenses pluralized in only three letters. And ideally you find that sort of thing early so that it doesn't um, mess with your whole solve. But I, I will acknowledge that this would maybe be a tougher spot for someone who's not 
constantly on the lookout for this sort of thing. Let's let's check the crosses and see if we if if this opens up any new horizons for us. We have weights on an album release. This is clever. So it sort of looks like it's saying someone is um, uh, anticipating an album release. But really what it's getting at, it's taking advantage of weights being the first word and therefore being capitalized because it's the first word of the clue. But it's actually also capitalized because it's a proper noun. It refers to Tom Waits, the, uh, the singer-songwriter. Okay. World's highest paid actor in 2021. Familiar. Oh, The Rock, I suppose. Yeah, so I guess he was in the Jungle Cruise film, which came out recently. So shows what I know. Turkish Inns. Is this Emirates? I want to say that's what that is. Oops. Let's, I'm not completely confident about that. I could be, could be confusing what this actual word is and minaret, perhaps. Brand of taco kits and sauces, walked, uh, walked would be trod, as in trodden, and stand in for the unnamed, oh, I see. So this is et al, um, Latin phrase. This actually came up uh, the other day, I believe, in, a, in another clue. And in large numbers, galore, I see. So we, we may well have rebuses galore in this grid. We'll see, we'll just have to see. Prairie stray. Um, I think this might be Dogi, sort of, a, I think, I, I'm thinking of the phrase sort of get along there, little dogies, or that kind of thing. I don't, I, I think I actually never really knew exactly what that means, but maybe it means stray on the prairie. And the, pra the reason that's what came to mind is because prairie, I think very intentionally has a sort of, um, American West connotation. So late media columnist David, this I think is David Carr, technology columnist who died, I want to say maybe five years ago. Um, fair amount of, I would say, American cultural context needed for this puzzle with Carr, um, this doggy, arguably, Yuma potentially, although I know that from the film, so others may well and then similarly, Logan Roy from Succession. I assume that show. I mean, that show certainly certainly airs here in the UK, and so I, I assume elsewhere. But anyway, uh, let's keep going. Bargain bin abbreviation. So I think this would be irregular, essentially. In other words, items that are damaged or or in some way uh, not able to be sold at full price. And I just happened to click on this cross, which is it's not a good look. Uh, this was in the crossword recently as well. So this this is ogle, in other words, a sort of leer, a, a levitious um, look, a um, disrespectful way of looking at somebody, I suppose. Uh, begins to get exciting with up, heats up. This, uh, oops, this crossword is beginning to heat up with this rebus, although haven't seen any, oh, 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 oh. Wait, sorry. Never mind. I thought I saw. I thought. <laughs> thought I saw an oat, but I don't. I don't think. Um, let's keep jumping around here. Sorry, I'm just looking now. I'm now that we have this oat, and I just thought of it again. I'm sort of looking around here, seeing if there are any more oats we can we can stick into the grid. I don't. This doesn't wouldn't make any sense up here. I don't think. So let's see. Blues organization. ANC, the African National Congress? What, what is this? INC, incorp Incorporated Company? Um, oh, de <laughs> sorry. Uh, it's the DNC, the Democratic National Committee, uh, the D which is the, um, the Democratic Party in the United States, as alluded to in yesterday's party animal puzzles with the donkey. So yeah, again, definitely some uh, you know, this is a fairly American puzzle, I would say. So, so I see. So successfully solicit with up would be to drum up, as in to drum up support. Um, sworn. Oh, here we go. So yes, this is sworn as in 
bound, but it but it's the more, a more specific meaning. It's as sworn as in in court when um, you're, you're legally bound to tell the truth. In other words, you're under oath. And here is another opportunity to use our rebus. Okay, so rebus under oath. No, it is under oath. So, whoops. Let's uh, let's go back here. It has a cedar tree on its flag. Um, could be Nebraska, the U.S. state. I'm not sure. Uh, let's see. So now we have an oat here, so that might help. Mobile homes of a sort. Mobile homes of a sort. What would end in oats? Oh, boats, houseboats. Aha. Yes. Okay. So it was less, it was, um, it, it was, I suppose, in in the vein of what I was saying, where it's a slightly cute interpretation of this phrase as hinted at by of a sort. It's a little more on the nose than snail shells, for instance, but less on the nose than a, um, what would you typically refer to a mobile home as a mobile home, which is a you know, automobile, big automobile that in which you can sleep. So, yeah. Oh, so the world capital, this must be Nassau, right? That's what I thought earlier, but I wasn't really sure and I didn't put it in there. Is it? Oh, yes. Okay. And then, oh, I did. Ah, this is killing me. <laughs> when I had that, when I had that um, little moment, that exclamation earlier where I sort of started talking about oat and I said, I thought I saw an oat. What I thought was Croatia. I thought oat here. And then for some reason I looked at it and determined it can't fit in the fill. I don't know why I thought that, but clearly it is. Yeah. Oops. Oh no. Oh, whoops. Ah, I, I just accidentally almost clicked the reveal button, gave myself, I've never actually pressed that before. So I, I thought maybe it would um, reveal instantly, but fortunately it didn't. Oof. Clearly I'm scatterbrained today. Sorry about this. Oh, I see. So a facial feature named for an animal is a goatee. That makes sense. Um, I, that, that would have, that didn't occur to me offhand, but that makes sense, I suppose. And in fact, we had, I think, bearded animal yesterday or maybe the day before, certainly this week we had bearded animal and the answer was goat. So there you go. There's some, there've been a few echoes in this puzzle. We've got that goat. Uh, we've got the DNC, the Democratic National Committee with its donkey mascot. Anyway, to end is to cease. I will cease this blathering. Let's continue with the crossword. Chicago conveyances. Here is both a, um, a bit of American cultural context and also, I would say, a bit of crossword ease for you. So this is referring to the elevated railway in Chicago, trains that run on elevated platforms above street level, and that is referred to as L, the L, E-L, the elevated train. Oh, I see. Nobel Peace Prize winner. It must be Al Gore. I didn't remember that he won the Nobel Prize, but clearly that's what it is. Um, NYC NABE near NYU. So the NABE is <laughs> an abbreviation of neighborhood, and I guess it's in there to indicate that we're abbreviating the name of the neighborhood. That's a bit unnecessary because we've already got NYC and NYU also abbreviated, but I suppose uh, they wanted to go full out abbreviating here with a very odd one that I don't know that I've ever heard before, NABE. I don't know that I've ever heard, referred to a neighborhood as a NABE. Anyway, I suspect uh, this is SoHo, right? Let's see. No, no, it's NoHo. I'm sorry, because cohort before millennials for short is Gen X, I guess. So here we have NoHo, yet another very American uh, little bit here. Oh, Rio Lobo, this must be. So cedar tree, the flag of Lebanon, I suppose, yes. Okay, so we've got the top almost half of the grid completed. It's been a little bit tricky, I would say, um, probably roughly in line with what you'd expect from a Thursday puzzle. To chew out is to ream out. And then let's look back up at this, this cross because this looks like we've got something. So life preserver or a hint to six squares in this puzzle. So it's always nice when they let you know 
that you have six of the theme squares in the puzzle. So we're looking for three more oats. And I wonder if they'll be symmetrically positioned. Uh, well, they're obviously not, there's obviously not vertical symmetry because we can see these two oats are not in the same row, but it could still be rotationally symmetrical, I think. Uh, anyway, so let's see here. So this, oh, I see. So <laughs> life preserver, uh, or a hint to six square squares in the puzzle. So we have these oats in squares, or you could call them cereal boxes. And I think what that's get what life preserver is getting at is that there is a brand of cereal known as life, and so it could come in a box. The box could preserve the life cereal. So spot of espresso. Uh, this is referring to a cafe, a spot where one might purchase an espresso. Italian home to the Basilica of St. Nicholas. Um, interesting. I don't know that offhand, actually. Basilica of St. Nicholas. I'm not sure. Excludes. You can see the color-changing mug is uh, getting quite dark. So this puzzle is taking some time. Uh, anyway, omits would be excludes. And then a starting lineup. Your starting lineup in general, your strong people for whatever it is you're attempting to do is your A-team. And blank Romeo in this case, not Romeo because it is Alfa Romeo, the Italian automobile brand, which came up, I think, not too long ago in the crossword. You can, you can start to see, if you've been following the series for a while or if you're new to the crossword, you can start to see how much um, for these especially shorter fills, they do rely on sort of a stable I mean, I don't know that alpha is necessarily really a, I wouldn't necessarily call it a sort of bit of crossword vocabulary per se, but it comes up probably more often than Alfa Romeo, Alfa Romeo does in an ordinary person's speech, unless you happen to be into cars. So it's it's disproportionately used, but but maybe not constantly used. And, uh, and L's, I think this might be the first time we've had L's this entire series, but it's certainly not the first time I've seen it in the crossword. So just an example of the kind of thing uh, you'll, you'll pick up as you do more of these. And, um, and, and once you have a lot of that kind of thing, then a lot of the challenge and the interesting part of the crossword starts to be more about the cleverer bits or the bits of knowledge that are, that are interesting to learn. I mean, I suppose it is interesting to learn about the L in Chicago, if you're not familiar with it, but but I think you know what I mean. Um, you'll the it, there's a certain amount of the crossword that you can be pretty confident in filling, and then you can deal with what's more legitimately challenging about any particular grid. So anyway, dispirit without. Um, it could be bum out, I suppose. Not it. Not too. Let's see. Um, rapper cool blank D. Um, that rings a bell, but I can't bring it to mind. Mo, possibly? I'm not sure. Let's keep going. Misbehave. Misbehaved. Past, I'm sorry. Acted out, it looks like, but, um, that's, um, too many, too many letters for this fill. Let's just keep going. Repulsive. Oh, wait, sorry. No, it's not too many letters because we have, no, it's not out, is it? I was, yeah, I was thinking somehow there was an oat in here, but but there's not. Sorry. Okay. Uh, repulsive, though, I think could have an oat. It could be loathsome, maybe. Let's put that oat in there. Loathsome. Yes, indeed. Um, it's easy to forget about what you need to be uh, looking for in these rebus puzzles if you haven't put one in to the grid in a while. So don't forget when you've got this kind of gimmick to always be checking, to always run it through your brain just in case. And actually, it does look like this is rotationally symmetrical. In other words, if you, um, this, the position of this oat cell mirrors radially the position of this oat over here, if you see what I mean. In other words, if you sort of rotated this, the, the position of this oat 180 degrees around from the center, of the grid, it would end up here. So what that suggests, possibly, is that the other oat, well, one of the other two remaining oats, could also be rotationally symmetrical here, and this final one could be rotationally symmetrical here. 
So, um, just something to consider. I mean, in fact, we could even we could even glance over here and see. Um, the spirit without. Let's see. Well, I'm actually not seeing it. <laughs> it may well be here, but I'm just not uh, just not getting it. Apologies if you are seeing it, but let's keep going for now. Uh, heraldic symbol. Oh, I see. So yes, a coat of arms, a bit of heraldry, the um, you know a, a sort of family crest, that kind of thing. Uh, to separate seed from. Um, th oh, thresh. In other words, to thresh. Oh, to thresh oats or something, right? Can oats be threshed? Not, not, not very farming literate, but that sounds kind of right to me, and would be a nice little nod to the theme. Misbehaved. Oh, maybe it's acted up rather than acted out. That would. It's basically the same thing. And then magazine with an annual investor's guide. Uh, my first thought was Forbes. But I suppose it's the other one of those, which is Fortune, <laughs> both m money magazines. I don't really know what the, um, I don't know if Fortune and Forbes have different character, or different tenor or what, but I think they're both financial publications. So here we go. Blank Jones, former Alabama senator. Well, it certainly looks like Doug, doesn't it? Uh, it's a name. Let's try the G and see what happens. Snookered. So if you snookered someone, you sort of conned them and you, you, could, you could say you got them. Right, so let's see if that works here. Yeah, I don't think so. Um, no, but um, yes, because Snookered is got. Actr actress Amanda Pete looks correct. So here we go. Pose, um, as, as in pose a question in this case, ask a question. Uh, so let's see, let's now look here. Home to the Golden Pavilion known as Kinkaku-ji. Um, well, based on the the that language and the fill and the letter. It could be Korea, I think. I mean, I don't, I'm not uh, completely confident that's the Korean language, but it looks like it could be. Let's try it and see what happens here. Beat. Uh, where I-70 meets I-71. Wow. So I think that's probably referring to two U.S. interstate highways. That is that is a very specific clue. I don't know what that is. Um, polo on TV. So this is presumably um, the name of somebody on TV whose name is Polo. And then we have where I-70 meets I-71. So I'm just going to take a guess that this might be Reno. Let's, let's, so I've got a guess on top of a guess right now. So let's keep looking and see if we can um, confirm or deny any of this. Works hard, old style. Could it be toils? That doesn't really seem old style necessarily. Maybe I just, let's just delete this all for now and come back to it. How about that? All right, noted Venetian bridge. Noted, so a noted bridge in Venice. Oh, and here we go. We have another Italian clue. This could be a tough one. If we don't know either of these place names or, or landmarks, I suppose. To be perfectly sized could be to fit well, maybe. Economics Nobelist Robert. A lot of proper nouns in this puzzle, and I'm not, I'm not really nailing them, am I? Planted could be sown, as in sown the seeds, planted the seeds. Immediately could be at once. Some creatures in the ocean's midnight zone. So it could be, it could be eels. I mean, it could be plural. It could be an adjective that some creatures are this way, but it's probably plural and it's probably eels, I would think. They're used in a crunch. So I think this is referring to the exercise crunch, the sort of sit-up type exercise um, using your abs. 
oh, look at this, mobile home. Could this, could this actually be getting at the exact sense of mobile homes I was using before crab or am I just, no, that's probably not true. Mobile home, what is this? Um, maybe this is eels. I'm probably just predisposed to think crab because I mentioned snail shells earlier, but crab isn't really a good answer to mobile home. Organization known for counting backwards. Oh, that's that's fun. NASA, in other words, counting down to a spacecraft launch. Extraneous computer programs that slow down a system. Um, I think this is probably malware, um, software that has a negative impact on your computer. Oh, mobile home crib, maybe? In other words, I see, I see um, a place it's a, a baby's bed, obviously, but also a home for the the mobile that hangs and rotates above the baby. That's that's a clever clue. Nice little um, echo of the uh, mobile homes of a sort up here. They probably could have clued them identically, right? Mobile home of a sort, mobile homes of a sort. I wonder why. I wonder what distinguished what what made them decide that this needs of a sort and this needs the question mark. I suppose because this is a more of a pun, whereas this houseboats is literally true, the of a sort just indicates that it's a little bit not what you'd expect, but it is still a, a literal answer here to this clue. So I suppose that's what that's getting at. Part of a place setting would be a, a utensil, a knife, fork, etc. Place setting at the table, that is. So. Um, maybe this isn't malware. And it looks like we don't have... Let's see, what am I looking at here? The reason I think it's maybe not malware is because dispirit without doesn't look like M fits. It does, with that U, it does look like bum out, doesn't it? Could this be badware? Oh, no, I see. It's another rebus. So this is bum, and then this is bloatware. And then now we have be perfectly sized. It's not fit well. It's actually more accurate than fit well because it doesn't, it isn't just sized pretty well. It is sized perfectly. It is fit to a T, very good. And then, oh, this might be cool mode D, actually, yeah. Oh, noted Venetian bridge, Rialto. That sounds right to me. And then Italian home to the Basilica of St. Nicholas would be Bari, which also sounds right. So, all right, we're getting there. So how many oats do we have? We have one, two, three, four, five. We need one more oat. They are not rotationally symmetrical, or at least most of them aren't. Looks like these two are, I guess, maybe by coincidence, um, but we can't rely on that for the third one, so it, it, it probably isn't here. So let's keep going. Um, I don't know that we've looked at all of the clues yet. Best ever in sports slang. Ah, so I think we're gonna use our, our oat again. I think this is the goat, which is very, very good because we had well, I think it's the goat, which is funny because we had a we had goatee in here as well, facial, facial, facial feature name for an animal, goatee, and then here the goat, and what that is getting at is the greatest of all time, which I think that goat, I think, has had a real surge in popularity as a phrase in the last several years. I don't remember ever hearing that growing up, and I hear it all the time now, not, not necessarily in sports specifically, but just in general, um, particularly online. Fresh blood. Um, I feel as though this could be a few different things. National Book Award winner for them, 1970. Um, Joyce Carol Oates, I suspect. And then Works Hard Old Style. Um... I mean, toils would work. I'm trying to figure out if there's some reason that that would or wouldn't be old style or if there's something more particularly old style that I'm not thinking of. Now that I have toils in my head, I'm having trouble getting it out. Or I-70 meets 
I-71. So I guess Reno was probably incorrect. Unless there's something that isn't the here. I mean, I was pretty much guessing with Reno. I don't have any clue if that's what these where these interstates go. I think it was just because I thought maybe this was Korea. Polo on TV. Terry Polo kind of rings a bell. Who is that? I don't know who that is, but that name sounds familiar. So this is probably in Japan, isn't it? That's the, oh, yeah, okay. This does definitely look more Japanese, but but that didn't occur to me earlier. So perhaps it's Kyoto. That se this seems better than Korea. Um, oh, I see. So beat, I was, classic mistake, thinking of the wrong sense of a word and then not adjusting your assumptions. I was thinking this, in other words, beat as in was victorious over, but in fact it is beat as in uh, musical tempo or rhythm. And so now we have fresh blood. Oh, okay. So a new, new hire, for instance, a hiree and works hard old style. So I suppose I was right to be skeptical of toil. That seemed not, I had that in my head and it was not right. So where I-70 meets I-71, this looks like Ohio, doesn't it? And then Moyles? Toils, moils, could moils be? I don't think I know that that word, but Fogel seems like a plausible name here. And it was. So there we go. A little bit of guesswork right at the end of that puzzle, unfortunately, but it it um, that happens sometimes in the crossword. And often you have to essentially consider what seems pretty plausible um, and go with that and hope that it pays off for you. <laughs> so that was a Thursday puzzle. Really nice theme. I would be curious to hear how you got on with this, with this theme and how long it took you to spot the rebus. Um, I suppose I sort of, I got a bit lucky maybe with my early spotting of this, of this rebus with, um, it was really cutthroat and moats that did it. I think moats was honestly the main thing. It just didn't seem plausible that we could squeeze castle defenses into a two-letter word. I just I just don't know what that would have been. I was thinking maybe something around chess, perhaps, because there's a move called castling, uh, but I just couldn't come up with anything that seemed plausible. And so that pushed me towards the rebus. And I do think that kind of thing is actually more common on a Thursday. So something to look out for. But yeah, how did you fare? With this, I'm, I'd be interested to know. And another thing, certainly plenty of American cultural context in here. It is the New York Times, so fair enough. But I know there are plenty of people watching from outside the U.S. And we've got uh, Yuma, we've got um, Ortega, presumably is an American brand. Um, we, uh, I assume Terry Terry Polo is American. I can't can't bring to mind who this is. Ohio certainly. Um, uh, DNC for Democratic National Committee. So there, there was quite a bit in there. Um, but yeah, how did you fare with this puzzle? I did enjoy it. I did enjoy it. And I always I always enjoy a rebus because it, it sort of turns the puzzle into a different, it, 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 it makes it almost an additional type of word game on top of what it already is. So I, I enjoy having that additional little rule mixed in. So let me know in the comments what you thought. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this puzzle. I hope you've been enjoying the series generally. If so, you should subscribe so you see these videos as they go up each day. And um, why not tell a friend about it? They might enjoy it too. They could learn about, about oats and moats and goats and bloatware. And um, if this is a particularly enjoyable series for you and you'd like to see it continue, um, then why not help it out by tossing me a couple of quid or a few bucks over on my coffee page, which is linked underneath each video in the description field. And there you can make a donation in an amount completely of your own choosing on either a one-off or monthly recurring basis. Thank you so much to everybody who has done so, particularly those of you who have uh, chosen that recurring option. It helps this thing become sustainable going forward, which is exactly what I, what I'm hoping it to be. So, with that, I will let you have an excellent rest of your Thursday. I certainly hope uh, that is the kind of Thursday you have. 
And I also hope you join me tomorrow for the Friday puzzle. Until then, take care.